Let's talk about the Chiefs practice today from Wednesday, August 3rd. Look at how the roster is currently shaping up. No, an impressive Isaiah Pacheco player comparison, as well as hear from Coach Reed, Justin Watson, Tershawn Wharton, Willie Gay, and much freaking more. But first, how about those? Chiefs? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, aka the Head Sheared, Scarlet Beard, and I have the one beard to bring them all and in darkness bind them. Okay, maybe not, but I do do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs, so make sure to sub if you're new for some insane coverage this upcoming season. Hit that like button if Patrick Mahomes is the father of the entire AFC West. And let's get into this video starting with a brief injury report update from today's practice, which still includes Rashad Fenton, who Andy Reid spoke about today during his presser, albeit briefly. Uh, yeah, he's another one that's working hard. We'll just see how this thing goes. Uh, I can't give you an exact date, but uh, he is progressing and and he's been working extremely hard. So yeah, he said Fenton is working hard and the recovery is looking good, but there's no timeline for a return on Fenton, which is a bit worrisome to me and how Fenton currently fits into the roster. The other three on the injury report are Lucas Niang, Prince Tega Winagho, and Jody Fortson, though Jody should be out there soon later this week, if not sometime next week. It's just a minor quad injury from what they have told us. Sky Moore, by the way, is confirmed not on the injury report. You can see in this clip here yesterday, he took an awkward fall and came up limping, ended up leaving practice early, although he didn't get carted off, he walked off. But he is back today, surprisingly, with absolutely zero sign of injury. He's confirmed all good to go and was seen today returning punts. And Pete Sweeney even noted he saw Sky make a diving catch and get up with zero issues whatsoever. And if you watch the route he runs right here, as you can tell, everything is Fine, that route looked fantastic. So that's it on the injuries. A couple other players I do want to make note of real quick, though, is Orlando Brown Jr. and Carlos Dunlap. Orlando's back in action and is looking good so far. He participated in practice today, though not the full thing. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. It's also worth noting that Orlando has slimmed down a tad and maybe is around 10 pounds or so lighter, which should put a little more pep in this man's step off the line. Good news there. Two thumbs up from Redbeard. As far as Dunlap is concerned, I believe he arrived today or tonight, hopefully, before I post this video and he should be practicing tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure of how much he will participate, but Andy Reid spoke a bit more on him during his presser and mentioned that Dunlap trains at the same place Orlando does. So he has a good feeling Dunlap is in pretty good shape already. The goal is to talk with Dunlap tomorrow or when he gets in and develop a plan moving forward, a ramp up plan similar to Orlando of sorts, though Dunlap is indeed older. And Big Red wants to keep that in mind when said plan with him is developed. And on the subject of the defense, just some updates for you guys. Linebacker Leo Chanel is looking to be in on clear cut run plays and has been looking great on said run plays, which is definitely the expectation for him. Meanwhile, linebacker Elijah Lee, the local legend, is looking to be the guy on more neutral plays. That could end up being a pass. He's looking great out there so far. Very appreciative to have Elijah Lee on the team. Cornerback Joshua Williams has been looking nice, but Jalen Watson has also been getting some love, seen having some reps with the ones as well over the past couple of days. So my question is, would Jalen be getting reps over somebody like, I don't know, DeAndre Baker? Meaning, is Baker in trouble? Something to keep our eyes on. Another cornerback, Trent McDuffie, the rookie, first round pick, you know, that guy. He's looking better over the last few days at practice as he's been able to use a bit more physicality which has been expected of him to do well. So that's good. Just wanted to make note of that. And as far as offensive standouts, I want to talk about this play, which you're seeing right now from good old tight end veteran Blake Bell, a nifty one-handed grab. Nice freaking work, Belldozer. Charles Goldman had this to say about Blake Bell today. If everyone is healthy, the Chiefs are going to roll with four tight ends again. Bell is the only one fit for in-line run blocking outside of Kelsey. He can do stuff like this on occasion, talking about the catch made here, of course, plus the belldozer wildcat QB sneak stuff. He then says, Fortson is a red zone nightmare and legit tight end two, receiving option behind Kelsey. Gray is used as an H-back and on the wings, great at doing all the pre-snap motion stuff, solid at pass blocking and has shown growth as a pass catcher in camp. Also has Dave Tobe's stamp of approval. Yes, Dave Tobe said yesterday that Noah Gray is a valued asset over on special teams as he is now, I believe, the most seasoned special teams vet returning from last season. So this man is a lock regardless if they keep three or four tight ends. Trust on that 
freaking book it. From here, I want to dive into Coach Reed's presser a bit more as there's some good little nuggets in there. Coach talked about the drafted corners and the fruitful time they've been spending with the rookies, the developments they've seen, and the talent they have at the position. He's excited about the position group for sure, yet basically deferred to Spags for any more specifics beyond that, meaning he doesn't really know about the position group right now until he talks with Spags more. Coach is happy with how things are progressing so far with the team. He can tell people are bought in and are hungry to improve and ultimately compete for a spot on the roster. And speaking of roster spots, or at least very near roster locks, most of us are very excited about running back Isaiah Pacheco. I've been talking about this man, and he keeps making waves. Here's what Coach Reed had to say about Pacheco specifically today. Yeah, he's got a little juice to him. Yeah, no, he's got good speed, toughness, all that. Um, look forward to getting him in a game and see how he, he does there. He's working hard on picking everything up and doing a nice job there. And since we're on the running back train choo-choo at the moment, let's stay here because Pete Sweeney gave his assessment on the running back room today. There's some interesting things to talk about. He doesn't see Pacheco as one fighting for a spot on the roster. He sees him as a lock currently as running back three and the primary kick returner at the moment per Dave Tobe yesterday during his presser. That's not a surprise. And neither is this. He sees CEH as the certified roster lock RB1 with the intriguing watch being on running back number two being a battle between Jarek McKinnon and Ronald Jones the second and his pro McKinnon argument is that in theory Pacheco could be the short yardage guy instead of Ronald Jones while McKinnon is a good offset of CEH with his pass catching abilities and also a good complimentary back in case of a CEH injury which we all know could very well happen if history is known to repeat itself, which we know it does. And then he said Gore could be stashed on the practice squad and utilized when needed for depth, and Rojo may see himself potentially traded to another team. Of course, things could go in a few different directions, but that's how it's looking at the moment in Sweeney's eyes. And I'm pretty much in the same boat, like the boat that Orlando flopped into that Andy Reid talked about. Anyway, if anyone is in trouble currently, it's Ronald Jones the second fighting for that running back number two spot. And regarding the running back room, I'm going to end on this tweet from Pete Sweeney himself. He says on Pacheco, he's reminding a lot of us of Kareem Hunt, except he runs faster. A 4.37 40 yard dash. Can you guys imagine if that turns out to be even remotely the case for Pacheco? I mean, that would absolutely be fantastic for this team and for the offense in particular, especially with the weapon Tyreek Hill traded away to the nasty little Dolphins, you know, having a more reliable run game to make up for the threat that Tyreek Hill was on offense would be freaking glorious. And since we brought up Tyreek, I do want to touch on his most recent podcast featuring Byron Pringle. Actually, I'm joking. I'm done with him and that little podcast for now. Let's instead chat about some receivers on the roster currently, one being a recent standout that deserves some continued discussion, and that is wide receiver Justin Watson. He has been a large part of the conversation as of late for a couple of reasons. One, he's had some standout plays recently at training camp. Good news. And two, he's a receiver that received high praise from special teams coordinator Dave Tobe yesterday and pretty much is an inked roster lock because of that. And then when he says, well, Watson can be our next Marcus Camp, to me, Watson's on the team. And so we'll see about that sixth position. Uh, but that for me was something that I, I made a mental note about. I, I think Watson. You know, you could almost write in what would be ink at this point to, to make the roster. Coach Reed was asked about Watson specifically during his presser today, and here's what he had to say about him. Yeah, so he's done a nice job. Big target, big kid, tall, fast. He's taking everything in and, and working hard. It's just working in the offense more and more and more. The reps that he gets are so important. The reps that he gets are so important, i.e., the more the freaking merrier. Big Red said Watson's been working in with the ones which is a positive sign indeed, and then stated Mahomes trusts him, which is another good sign. Remember, they got reps together as well in Texas during the offseason, which only helped. Watson himself actually talked about that during his presser today. Yeah, he spoke today as well and mentioned how much he enjoyed getting that work in with Mahomes and building that rapport with him. Yeah, Pat's been awesome. Me, I signed as a you know futures contract and to reach out to me and invite me in the offseason before we ever met. Uh, to come down there and work uh, meant a big deal. You know, those first couple of weeks were fun. He's got a great setup down there in Texas. You know, we went back after OTAs, and, and hopefully that can be a thing going forward. So, yes, that's good. Building rapport with QB number one, our half a billion dollar QB, the best in the game. And 
Andy Reid did echo that Mahomes trusts Watson, which is a very good sign. Remember, Mahomes called Veach and was like, can you tell me how fast this guy is again? Because I was almost late on my throws because he was that fast. So you got to love that. Big Red said the biggest thing right now for Watson is that he continues being consistent in his practices, which he feels Watson is improving and doing a good job on the offense so far. Coach then touched on wide receiver Josh Gordon, saying he has a great attitude, is working hard. He's been getting reps in with the ones, twos, and the threes, trying to get this man as many reps as they can, but there's a lot of competition, and it's all a bit of a juggling act. I don't have anything to juggle. I was going to try, but I don't know how anyway. So they're going to try to get as many guys, as many reps as they can. Sweeney's notes on Gordon were not as optimistic as Coach Reed's, however, even though Coach Reed didn't really say that much about Gordon. Sweeney said he's getting more reps with the second and third team, which means he's like moving down the ladder a bit here and has had a pretty quiet camp thus far, though he was seen getting some work in with Mahomes today here in this clip. So that's good. But I think another thing working against Gordon at the moment is that he's a guy who does not play any special teams. And based on Dave Tobe stressing his need for special teams, guys, based on all the turnover from the offseason, I'm not sure how Gordon would fit into that plan currently. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not personally as doubtful about Gordon right now as I am about Ronald Jones and think we may simply have to wait and see how preseason unfolds because Gordon could very well still make his case for why he belongs on the roster. So we'll have to wait and see. But right now it's trending upward for Watson and a bit downward or more neutrally for Gordon, who really needs to show out because he's not going to play special teams not as multidimensional as somebody like Watson. And from here, let's stay on the subject of receivers a bit longer because the man of the hour himself, Justin Watson, took to the podium today to speak with the media. He started out explaining why he signed with KC, saying it really wasn't an easy decision because he knows the team is a great team. Yeah, we are. And they have a deep wide receiving room. But Brett Veach talked with his agent and said, if you come to KC, we will definitely give you a chance to make the roster. And Justin Watson was like, okay, <laughs> He has felt like the team has done just that so far leading up into the season. Watson praised the special teams unit, talking about the time and the effort that Tobe puts into it with all the guys. He knows the last few spots on the roster will be decided by special teams. And special teams has always been important to Justin. And he's here to work and freaking compete. Watson learned a lot of lessons from working with Brady. Every single rep mattered there so much, whether it was practice, OTAs, training camp, or the game. And Mahomes reminds him a lot of Brady in his characteristics as a leader. Working with Pat, you see so many of the same characteristics. You know, it's no surprise that two great quarterbacks are so similar in many ways. And it's cool seeing Pat continue to grow, continue to make new throws, hearing him talk through the offense. So he's a great leader. I'm really thankful to be playing with a quarterback like Pat. Watson said so far in camp, he's the guy that's been doing a little bit of everything. He's been working outside, catching deep passes, been inside in the slot, and honestly just aims to be the guy that can pick up right where things were left off when his number is called on in the game, whether somebody's injured, needs some water, or needs to tie their little shoelace. He feels he's starting to see plays the same way as Mahomes, saying that as trust is being established more and more, he can begin to see past the playbook like Mahomes does. Pat has that ability to see the field and, and think past the playbook and see coverages, and so he speaks every day in our team meetings, and it makes it really clear what he wants from us at receiver. Watson loves chopping it up in the film room and seeing it develop out on the field, and it's only going to help him moving forward as preseason approaches. Watson's been leaning a bit on MVS, saying he's a great leader, even though they are a similar age. They were drafted the same year. MVS is from Tampa, and of course, Watson played in Tampa, so they feel connected in that regard. Their spirit animal is the Buccaneer, and he feels like Marquez has really helped Watson's game in route running abilities. Deep routes are becoming Watson's strength as he's been running for a lot of deep passes here in KC, much more so than in Tampa. And that's because Tom Brady's arm is literally withering away. Poor little brittle man. He just turned 45 today. And Watson said he's really been enjoying the deep ball aspect. He then shared a pretty funny story about deep passes that you guys will also enjoy hearing. There's uh, a play in the film room I was on the backside and I was like 50 yards downfield and I started slowing down because most quarterbacks can't make that throw across the field. And they said, hey, keep accelerating. If you're open, he'll find you. And sure enough, we've hit a couple of those already. So it's, uh, it's different that it doesn't matter how deep you are. Uh, if you're open, he's going to find you. And, and that's the truth. Translation. We know you'd normally need to quit running your route when in Tampa because Tom Brady's arm strength is that of an eight-year-old child. But things are different here. 
trust us. Just keep freaking running down the field and Mahomes will make sure to find you <laughs> and you gotta love it. I'm definitely excited for Justin Watson and right now definitely think he has a very strong chance of making the roster or is basically a borderline roster lock already. Willie Gay Jr. was up next to the podium explaining how he feels his role has increased as vets like Hitchens, Matthew, and others have left the team, and he just aims to step up as needed alongside Nick Slick Bolton. I just made that up to help this team succeed. Willie had another pick on Mahomes today, which gives him a lot of confidence for the season as he has some lofty goals for himself. Give me a lot of confidence. You know, I got uh, goals to lead linebackers in the NFL and interceptions this year, so when Pat throws me some, I know the other quarterbacks will because they're not as good as him. So, Do you ever say anything to Pat or does he ever oh, say nah. anything to you? Oh, nah. Ain't that cocky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he continues saying he feels like he was drafted because of his coverage ability and he dropped several passes last year that would have amounted to like five or six INTs on the year. So he wants to improve on that and show he can make those plays happen this upcoming season as that can definitely change the momentum of the game. Willie then talked about his brotherhood with teammate Nick Bolton, confirming that Bolton, quote, runs the show, an interesting comment. He said Nick took off ever since he stepped foot in the building and has not looked back, though of course both of them are here to help take things to the next level. There's levels to this game. He feels they're in a good spot as a duo, and I agree 100%. Willie then talked about how covering someone like Kelsey in practice is a very unique and sharpening experience. Travis is, he's different. You know, t tight ends don't run routes like Travis. He's patient, very slow routes, but they very efficient. But um, it definitely makes you better for the guys that you play against every week because, once again, nobody runs routes like Travis. Nobody can throw the ball like Pat. So we get better over there, man. So, yeah, you got to love that because nobody's better than Patrick Mahomes or Travis Kelsey. They only help elevate everybody around them, including the defense, which is a great sign. Up next was Tershawn Wharton to the podium and he said this, Coach Cullen wants me to go. He wants to see speed and quickness over reading then reacting. Basically what Joe Cullen was saying, you see Chris Jones over there, whatever he's doing, do exactly that. Wharton said George Karloftis knows one thing and that is G-O. If he makes a mistake, he said it's gonna be at a thousand miles per hour, then we'll learn from it and get better from there. He shows he deserves to be here for sure, so good. I'm glad to hear that from Wharton about Carl Loftus. Tershawn has been taking advice from players like Chris Jones, utilizing their off-season training habits, and he definitely feels he's better this season than last season, which is good. Nat, get out of my face. Dude, I'm... Sorry about that, but the Nat is now dead. Anyway, Wharton loves being able to work against such a great O-line, saying it only makes him better then says Frank Clark is very passionate about the game, watching film with them, teaching them after practice, and it's been very helpful for them. He respects the vets on the team like Clark and Chris Jones and the leadership aspect they bring to the team. There's new players on defense this year, yes, but the goal here is the same. I think he's keeping it pretty much the same. We a thousand miles per hour, you know, he we we going. <laughs> like we got new guys in, but the culture of the Chiefs are still here. You know, we want to win. And that's what he's coming in and having us do. Well, yes, that's right. We want to win. We want to catch many, 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 many W's. Yes, freaking sir. What did you guys think of today's practice? Are you grateful? Skymore is all good and his hip is fine. You ready to see Dunlap tomorrow? What are your thoughts on Isaiah Pacheco as the next faster version of Kareem Hunt? And what is that going to do for our offense if that's the case? Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments down below. And trust me, we will fight about it down there per usual. Yeah. Make sure to leave a bearded comment or a super thanks to potentially be featured in an upcoming vid. Like this video if you haven't already for the algorithm push and check out this video here Boop, pew, from the homies at All Chiefed Up today. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Chiefs?